Do you have a crosscut sled? Do you realize that the most important jig you can have in your shop is a crosscut sled? There are so many videos on building crosscut sleds. There's a bunch of methods, but I'm going to show you one with a certain little twist that doesn't require a lot of specialized um, materials. I am excited to show you how to build this crosscut sled. I've been meaning to do this one for a long time. Let me just show you my old sled. Here it is. There's a lot of creative ways you can use a crosscut sled that I hope, well, I know we'll get into a lot more as we get into uh, more complex projects. This is a pretty large one. It doesn't have to be this big. I'm going to show you one a little smaller. You can make them in all different sizes. You could make them really narrow to just cut narrow boards. In this case, this, this one's as large as my table saw, 28 by 38. And that's what I'm going to build uh, tonight. I'm going to replace this one. And I like the larger field for a lot of things I do. Often I'll tack boards down at angles to act as, as angle fences to create um, angles accurately without a lot of fuss. All right, so I'm going to set this guy aside for a minute. But here's one a little bit smaller that I built earlier today, and I was working the bugs out of a new technique I'm really excited to share with you to get a great uh, square, accurate setup. And a, some of it's very intuitive. You don't need even digital scale to nail and lock this in. All right, so this is a basic sled. Now, you can build sleds uh, with all kinds of bells and whistles. I like a crosscut sled. In fact, I demand a crosscut sled is, does what it's supposed to do, and that's cut squarely, accurately, reliably, and consistently. So that's what we really got to nail here. And we don't need to spend a lot of money on the materials here. Let me show you what's involved here. We've got the main table itself which I like to use uh, half-inch material because it's, it's thick enough that it works well under a lot of different materials. It stays relatively flat, um, and you don't lose a lot of depth of cut. This, this one has Baltic birch plywood at half-inch. It's very solid feeling. It's, it's, a, it's a great plywood, but at the half inch thickness, it can get a little funky and go slightly out of flat. So I actually prefer to use MDF like this. And this feels, I think this is the lightweight half inch MDF. So the great thing about MDF is that it is lighter than the Baltic birch. So if you're gonna make a large sled, it's, not, it's nicer. And it stays really flat. So we're gonna use that for tonight. Now. That's going to be our surface. Then you need a backer, a back rail, and this is your, your fence, basically. That's your material that you're going to cut. Like, let's say I was going to cross cut this. I want to reference right off my fence and make a nice cross cut, just like that. So we need, we need a back one and something along the front. The front rail can go the full length. Or you can just use a shorter section like mine here because really all it's doing is keeping the sled together over the kerf that's cut here. And the back fence though is super critical that this is flat and true and just really straight. You want to start with something really straight and accurate. The more straight and accurate it is, the better results you're going to get on your sled. Now. It's hard to buy plywood like that is going to be dead flat and straight and thick enough. So I like to make my own. Some of my earlier sleds, I used solid wood like poplar, um, which is great. But eventually, it seemed to cup and it would get a little weird and wasn't a great back or fence. So something like plywood is ideal. Now, you don't need to go out and buy expensive plywood. In fact, I just used some of the extra half-inch Baltic birch 
for this. So you can make your own plywood that's very true and flat, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. The last element of this sled are the runners. Now, you can buy runners, you can buy metal ones, you can use plastic slippery ones. I'd rather just make them out of wood and glue them on and get them really accurate and true. So we're going to use solid wood, and I'll explain a little bit more about those in a minute. But let's first get started on making our fence, okay? So what I like to end up with is about an inch and a half thick. So there you are, and, uh, and our front as well. You can just take two layers of three-quarter or three layers of half. You can mix it up. This might be two of half and two-quarter inch. So you can do all kinds of things. Now, I know I'm using the wrong term. There's six millimeter and 12 millimeter is actually the quarter and a half, but I'm just calling it that. Now, there's a great method. I want to just show you gluing this up. We'll make our own plywood right now. So here's our layers and check it out. Look at, see how funky and curve that is? Can you see that curve right there? It's got a, a bow in it. Mm -hmm. They all have, you know, it's just not super flat. Now, how do you get this straight? Believe it or not, that fence I showed you there is dead straight and it started very similar to this. And the way it did it is by using true calls that you clamp the layers between. So if you have some material that's heavy like this, they're really flat and true right on these sides. They just, I mean, you can, they barely slide around. It's almost suction there. And those are going to be the interior of the call. So then I would bring my material up here and I'm just going to open it like a book. And I'm going to get some glue on here and here. And I'm just going to clamp these between the calls just to show you how quick and easy it is. Now I've got this roller already prepared with some glue on it. And this, by the way, this is a good method for uh, saving your roller between glue ups. Just don't forget about it because if it goes a few weeks, it turns a nasty black <laughs> on the edges. How do I know that? Because I've done it a lot of times. I'm just going to put a little, I'm going to use Type Bond 3, but this, this plywood does suck up the glue pretty much. Well, here's the thing now. We've got a large surface. When you're gluing up surfaces like this, I'm going to just flip this and pop it on there and get some clamps down and just clamp these. And with the heavy weight of these rails, it distributes the pressure very evenly and it, it corrects those layers into an absolute flat, new, inch and a half thick panel. It works great. But when it's at this point here, the layers are a little greasy, you know, because of the glue. I, I try not to put too much on there, but they're going to want to slide like this when I start putting the clamp pressure, if I don't get it exactly right. Now, you can see from my, my um, jig that I'm going to be cutting out some. So I'm going to strategically tack these layers in the area where I'll be cutting away. So... I don't have to worry about them sliding around. So I've just got a little 5 8 inch brad nailer here. Um, I'm just gonna, I've got 5 8 inch 18 gauge. How wide are those um, pieces of plywood, Tom? Oh, good question. Um, right now, I think they're like 4 and 7 eighths, and I'm going to I rip them down to 4 and 3 quarters. So the fence is that high right in the middle. All right, so see, I tacked them right there, and that won't slide. And now I want to tack in the same opposite position. 
so I can cut these away later. And that'll keep me, now I don't even have to worry about that. So that's kind of nice because that can be a hassle when you're trying to clamp something up like this. So yeah, these calls, these are like five and a half and uh, works out beautifully for this. So I'm just gonna pop on it the clamps here and this is enough pressure you could use larger ones if you wanted but you really these will apply plenty <laughs> the glue is so far away from the calls you're a half inch so you can see right in here so you've got that little glue line look at the little beads of glue that's perfect that's just what you want you can see how evenly they're squeezing out all the way down so that's giving us really nice pressure and I usually let that sit a day so the, the glue will really season and reach its full properties. And then it'll ensure that it's going to stay flatter. So that's the way you can make yourself a perfect inch and a half rail for the back of your sled. Now, for the front, you notice that I've got this shorter one. This one's about uh, 13 and a half to 14 inches long. Like I said, you could make it the full length, but um, I just did a separate glue up with three layers like this the same way. Now, that front piece is not super critical. It, almost, it doesn't even really have to be true flat, but it's so short, it's easy to make it um, that way. So I'm gonna set that aside. So here's the, the runners that we're going to use. Now, if you zoom in there, you can see the grain on these is going perpendicular to the surface. So if you're not familiar with that, that's called a quarter sawn cut. I can even see the flecking on the surface, which appears when you quarter saw um, maple like that, hard maple. So those are nicely quarter sawn, and I ripped them I, on the bandsaw, actually. So I had a board that was more plain sawn with the grain going across. So almost like this board, you can see the grain lines running horizontal here. This is plain sawn or flat sawn wood. The, the growth rings are tangential to the surface like that. And so you're getting these wide bands here right across the growth rings. But if you would rip this, you know, lots of times I'll band saw if I want to get this material and I just joint one edge and then I'll band saw, you know, a good three eighths of an inch thick, you know, almost the depth of the slot or right at the depth of the slot of my saw. Um, and then you can thickness sand it. And once I have that, I would then joint the edge and rip those. And then I run them through the drum sander, these edges until I feel them slide beautifully into the slots. Now mine, I actually had to make a right and a left because the slots were slightly different. Like the right is a little larger than the left slot. So I didn't want a lot of play in there. So these, you don't want them to jam in there and I'll show you how they fit in a minute. I'm going to show you the fence that we're going to use. It came out of the glue up and just like that. And this is a, a stack nice three stack of uh, the uh, 12 millimeter or half inch Baltic birch. This piece is gonna be my back rail. So my sled is 38 inches long. I'm gonna make it almost the full length. It's like 37 and three quarters. And the height is four and a three quarters, four and three quarters. And I made this little template to cut the shape. So this is my center line. And it's the full four and three quarters here. And then it goes down to two and a half. So you can more easily push and hold the material down on the table. And you can also put little blocks and stop blocks, easily, quickly clamp them on this lower height. It makes a nice, useful height for it. The higher in the center is to maintain the rigidity of the sled because when you crank that blade up, like I said earlier, you're going to get up as much as two and a half inches in height. So you want to have still some meat up there to keep your sled together because you're basically 
cutting your sled in half <laughs> without that height. All right, so now if you check this out, this is, I know you can't really sight it, but I've got a straight edge here. You know, I know, look at it. It says straight edge. So <laughs> anyhow, this, look at that. That is jointed and that is dead flat and I've done nothing to it. But it doesn't always come out like perfect, perfect. You, I mean, that's pretty darn good. I kept that in there for over a day. And uh, the back side, I usually look for the side that's the absolute best. But you know what I like doing too is skim planing these things just to ensure it. Let me show you. If, if you get a little bit of a bow on it, or you have one end that's off slightly, you can just use, this is where I like to use the big old number seven, my grandfather's old plane. And I don't use it much, but man, it's a pleasure because it's so true. I'm just gonna very lightly move down and Oh my gosh, look at, you can, I don't know if you can pick this up. I'm feeling this little skim, it's like hitting, hitting, but I'm seeing the, the actual um, sander marks from the giant sander that this went through. It's skimming over the top layers. And look how thin I'm taking off. But this is just truing it up even a little more. And let's take a look at the straightness of it just for kicks. Get our straight edge out. I mean, look at that. It's dead nuts. <laughs> so I'm happy with that. Now, this is gonna be this is gonna be the center. I'm gonna just and I made this this X is my good flat side. So and this will be the top. Um, usually I just make a face like that. So that's gonna be the top face of it. Now the first thing I want to do is cut it. I've got to cut it to shape now. So I'm just going to quickly lay this on here. I'll put it on the center line. This is over long. And draw that out. And flip. Put it on the center line. And draw this end out. All right. So now I'm going to go to the bandsaw. Saw away. And we'll clean this up. I did. I mean, you, if you had a good straight edge coming out of the glue up, you could, you could rip along that, like scrape the glue off and then rip your other side. And that would be pretty good. Um, you get a truing factor when you rip on the table saw. But I, um, I did join it. This, the downside is this Baltic birch is tough on your knives. You may see the little indication of it. I think it's the glue that's used in there. Um, but I really wanted to get this right, so I went way over and, and jointed it. So yeah, and then I ripped it to the four and three quarters. I didn't put nails in this one. And if I was, I would just set them a little, because I barely, I think they are already set enough, but um, I barely touched the surface here. All right, here we go. Right. I made those curves as tight as I could for that three-quarter inch blade. That's why I was slowing down to make that cut. So um, you don't need to make this shape exactly. But anyway, now I'm going to clean that up quickly. This is, this is a jig, so I don't have to be too fussy about it. But I'm going to clean the edge. And then I'm going to round the edges with a uh, eighth inch round over bit. So I'm gonna just go one to the other really quick here and get this done. Here we go.
All right, now we're gonna head over to the table saw. Uh, one thing I didn't do on my other sled that I meant to is put a little relief groove right along the bottom. This is the front edge where the wood's gonna come up against. And it's a handy little relief cut that you make there so that the dust, if there's any dust on your table, it gets packed under there rather than messing up the squareness of your cut. So I just have the table saw set up here and I'm just gonna make that quick cut. I have a sacrificial fence and I buried the blade about a half, 16th into the fence and I'm gonna just make that cut like this. Now, we ready to assemble our sled. <laughs> to do this, we need our main piece. And I, I've got this marked back. That's toward me. There's a slight crown in it. And I wanted that to be down like that. So we push it down. And um, I can just, oops, i got to drop the blade. And while I've got it in this position here, I can bring it forward and I'm just centering it on the table where I want it. I'm going to just have it centered, not do the offset thing or anything like that. And I'm going to mark, here's the blade uh, in case I need that. But then here's my slot. So this is the right slot right here. I'm going to just get a mark under here. This should show me where it is, right here, with it centered, okay? Now, with that, I'm going to flip it over and mark it. Now, before I do that, I wanna just show you what we're going to do here. We've got our slats, We've got our little, um, our right. It fits in there really nice. And then we've got our left. It goes right in there. See how it's it can freely fit. There's hardly any movement to it, but they end up getting slightly aligned, and it probably will feel a little tighter anyway by the time we get them all done. Now, if you notice, they you have to have them thinner than the depth of the slot, so that you don't want to be riding there. You want your sled to be on the table, so these have to be thinner. So that's recessed about a sixteenth of an inch, or not quite. So what I'm going to do is I have a couple little pieces of 16th inch veneer that are going to slide underneath and that's going to prop those up so that they're a little higher than the height of the table right now. Barely, but they are higher. So then I'll get that one in over here. And I made these little register marks here to show me how much I'm going to have hanging out each end of the sled. Now, the first one, here we go, bring this up. You can see this is right about where it's going to go, and we're going to have that attached here. Now, rather than just kind of eyeball it and attach them like that, I want to get it so that the runners are roughly square to this back edge. It's, it just makes putting the fence on a little better. I want it to be close to aligned with this back edge. So I'm going to flip it over. And I've got my lines right here. And here's my right runner. And this is going to go over. This is going to go like that. So I just flipped everything over that way. So now I want to carry those lines back square. Now this is where having a great square helps you a lot. Now, I've, I've fussed around with lots of squares, but I recently got this one from Woodpeckers. It's really nice. I don't, you know, I'm not sponsored by anybody, but I, it's light. It's got, it's, it's just really well made. I, it's got aluminum and I can't even get into how well it's made, but I just know they know a lot more about metal than I do. But it is so dead on. It's really a pleasure to have. We have to know we have square. So to have a square you can rely on. This, is, this isn't even the biggest one they make. This is a, a 12, 18, and it's awesome. So 
Um, you know, you can make a line here, but I'm just going to use, let's see, I'll use this straight edge to give me a little extra length on this one, okay? So this is 18, but um, I'm getting some extra. Technically, it's, it's 16 out to here, a little over 16 and a half. So, um, but I'm going to, whoops, let me see, I want this on this face, yeah. And then I want that right there. Okay, so this isn't the critical part. This isn't the part where we really have to make sure we're dead square. So I'm going to set it in like right there. Now I'm just going to tack it at the front and the back and then I'll let it fit the slot here in a second. But I do want to glue these on. So I'm just going to run a quick bead of glue here right down the middle. All right, so I'm going to just flip this down. I hope I didn't put too much glue in there. I don't want to deal with squeeze out here, but I might have. And I'm going to slide it over, get it right on that mark. Now I need to go get my nail gun. And I've got 5 eighths brads here, so I'm in no danger of going through. But I'm just going to tack it right here. So now I'm using that straight edge. Wow, I've got it pretty well straight all the way out, so I'm going to just hit it right out here. All right, now I may be a little crooked, but that's going to true up when I get it in the slot. Okay, so that's, that's got us pretty square to this back edge. And I'll set it in there. Now with it in the table, now I can make a mark showing me the center, and the center, and I need another straight edge. I can just use the bottom here. No, this is straight. And I need a line here to show me where I can hit the brads on this. Okay. Now that, that shim is holding it up high enough, so I've got good pressure, and it's in the groove. I'm in the groove. I know I'm, I'm well lined. All right, so there we go. We've got one shot. Now, you can get a little bit of play when you have one. I have built jigs with one, and it's kind of handy because you can turn them around, and um, you can do. But this one, this is a double railer. So we want to we get a little more rigidity with it that way. So to do this side, I'm just going to put that bead right on here. Now I'm going to get it set on the other side, get it in the other groove first. I'll try to come down. I'll get the overhang the same. So that's all set. It's held up, and I'm right where I want to be. It's going to get a little register mark here and then out here. I'm going to carry the lines across. So there it is. Now I can take these shims out. We've got the makings of an awesome sled. Oh, and it slides like butter. So it's got a little bit of vine, but that's fine. I could lightly sand it if I wanted, but there's zero play. And then I'd wax those runners as well. All right, so now we're getting ready for putting on our fence. That's the last step here. And then we want to square it up. So the, I want to just mark the center line right here. I can see it right over the blade. Because I'm going to set my outgoing fence there. So I've got that. Now I'm going to push it forward. And I'm going to make, make sure I've got my mark in the back here. Yeah, I want to attach my fence like this. But before I do that, I'm going to get that outrigger fence on first. And for that, we're going to do it over here on our setup table. I'll put this over here, and here's my, my backer piece that I made just like the other, nice and flat, I'll round it off, and I've got my center line marked right there. So I'm going to bring that sled over here, okay, so that's my back, I want that over there, 
And this is the away side. So I'm going to take this and with that propping me up there, I'm going to bring that up. So let me push this over a little more. Get near the edge of the table here. All right, so I'm going to run some screws in here. But before I do, I'm going to run, put some glue in there as well. Now, I'm not planning on beveling my saw blade here later, but I might. You know, I might lay it over. So I got to think here. It lays over this way. So when I run the screw in here, I want to be far enough away that I would never hit it. So anyway, let's get a little glue on there. And I'm going to run some screws in here. And I'm just going to center this. Before I run the screws in, I'm going to pop a couple quick clamps on here. Keep it from sliding around. Okay, snug it up, and we're ready to run the screws in. So to do that, I'm going to have a pre-drill and a screw gun. So I'm just going to run one in right over next to the runner. I'm going to come in about three quarters of an inch. I've got a little six number six pre-drill uh, bit here with a countersink. And then I'll do the same over here. And then... Let's see, this is where I might slope the blade, so I've got to get far enough away. A good, almost two inches away. And then over here. Because these screws are inch and five-eighths. I'm just using the coarse thread drywall. I've got to make sure these are countersunk enough so that the heads are below grade. Let's go, run these in. Now, it always helps if you have a little beeswax, you can just run it on the thread and it makes these go in much easier. And um, this is going to be kind of loud. Sits. So, that took care of our outfeeder. Now comes the fun part. Now, we're going to put it back on the sled, on the table. And we've got to make our first kerf cut. If I raise the blade about an inch, so I'm about, I would see about half the blade above the surface, I'd be right there. So you can see I made this little mark back here. And if I come forward, it's about two inches. Is By the time it comes up through the table, it'll be right here. So I'm a little over two inches to the back there. So what I want to do is cut this groove in the sled, but not all the way through. I'm going to leave it connected in the back and the front. I know I'm already, I'm still closed here, but I think I don't want to cut it yet. So I want to maximize the tightness of this slot. So go right there. Here we go. I'm going to turn it on and raise the blade. So this is the exact cut that our saw blade is going to make now that it's on the new runners. So we want to set the fence square to that saw cut, that kerf cut. So to do that, I've got a little um, insert that was already sanded. And hopefully, yeah, nice. It's snug. I want it to be nice and snug in there. So I'm going to get it about the right length, and I'm going to cut it to fit in there. I'll be right back. Okay, so check it out. It's going to go into the curve, and it's snug, okay? And it's a half inch in, and it's up about a half inch above. This is a piece of, just a piece of, um, I think it's maple, curly maple or something I had scrappy so it's pretty rigid and then now it's giving me a fence that I can square off of to set up my fence and look at this is where 
the square is amazing again. It's leaning, it's registering very positively right against it, right there. So if I get my fence lined up here, I'll be pretty darn on the money. But let's go ahead and pull this back. And now we want to bring our fence in. Now this fence, we don't glue. We want to move it. We might have to readjust it at some point in the, in the future. So it will get a number of screws under there, but it's not going to get glued. So we're going to just start by getting one screw out on the end. But before we do that, I want to just check and see how we are relative to the back edge. So if I'm right against the insert, I can feel that's really good. It feels pretty solid right there. And I've got the same overhang on both ends. And it is almost dead flush with the back. Let's go ahead and get a clamp down this end. So I'm going to put one right near the end here. I want to hold this strong and true while I run the screw in here. Now, I'm going to just run a screw about an inch in from the end. I'm going to just get about in the middle of this, come about an inch in. Yep. Get a second one. There's a little countersink there. Now I'm going to run that screw in. What I like about this pre-drill is that because it's for a number six, the shank goes in and it's tight and it's accurate. It doesn't move at all. So if I had, if I did two step drilling here, I would have a misalignment possibly or some play when the screw runs in and you don't want any play here. You want it to land exactly where you want it. This one's not as critical, but when I do the ones later, it is. It's nice and snug. Now this is our first screw. This is kind of like a pivot point. Now we can take the clamp off. I can move the fence here. So I'm going to swing it back until I see this is dead nuts against that insert. It looks really good. I'm going to put a clamp on here and then check the other side too. Right in. If you take your time with this, I mean, you could land with a beautiful, accurate sled right off of the square. So let me throw it on this side. Feels pretty good. I'm going to move this clamp in a little bit more. Might have slipped the fence a little bit. This is where doing a fast video. <laughs> you don't want her to be fast right at this moment. You want to make sure you're nailing this. And that looks that looks great right there. I'm going to stop right there and snug this down. And there we go. So we pivoted our fence into square off of that screw. Now I'm going to come from this screw, which is right about here, right about an inch in. And I'm going to come over like 20, 23 inches just before the uh, runner. That 23 is going to mean something in a minute. So let's just run a screw right in there. I'm going to be right in the middle, about 3 quarters of an inch in on my line. There we go. Now let's check that out. Boy, it's, it's, hitting, it's hitting flat on that insert all the way. Now, let me check the straight edge, make sure my fence is still straight. I meant to check it after I trimmed it, but it looks pretty darn good. So I could check this side, and that's landing really nice too. So I'm pleased with right where it is. We're going to run our saw cut all the way through. So. We haven't done that yet. We don't need to use that alignment anymore. And I've got two screws in there, but it's really rigid. I've got one here and one here. So I'm going to use the right side of the fence. I'm hitting a little snugginess there, so I'm going to just stop for a second. Sometimes you can see a burnished area on the runner, which I see on this edge. I'm going to just hit a card scraper and put a little wax on this right now. So yeah, I can definitely see you get a little shaving off here. Now 
That's probably good. Now I'm going to put a little wax on these guys. But we can fine tune it later. I just want you to see that's the process of truing it up. And let's get it back in the groove. Ah, oh, yeah, that's better. Beautiful. All right, so I'm going to raise the blade a little bit and cut through the sled. Wow. Looks nice already. I love, I love sharing that with you. This is so fundamental and so helpful to do very accurate work. You can imagine now, if you cross-cut a 10-inch square board, you're going to be so on, it'll be scary.